All right, Robert, so for those who don't know, who have not been glued to the interwebs and their cell phone for the better part of the weekend, Friday night, uh, Russell Brand comes out with a, it's an impromptu video or it's an, I guess it's an unscheduled video saying this is happening, was the title, and then gets into the fact that he had been contacted by journalists at the times.uk which is apparently is rupert murdoch owned channel four which i don't even know what it is but everybody says don't take it seriously whatever gets uh contacted by journalists saying we're coming out with it's either an expose if you believe it or uh, an absolute hit piece if you don't tomorrow and it's going to allege serious serious set crimes of a sexual nature um I don't know if they asked him for comment and he didn't say whatever, but they notify him, this is coming out tomorrow, buckle yourself up. So he comes out with a video saying, this video is coming out tomorrow. Uh, it's going to make a bunch of serious criminal accusations of a sexual nature. Uh, and just rest assured, everything that I've ever done in my life has been consensual. It's, it's all lies, et cetera, et cetera. For those who haven't listened or read his book, I listened to it. It's called The Recovery. And he goes through the 12 steps of recovery because Russell Brand is an admitted, very open, um, recovering drug addict and recovering sex addict. And we'll say just a recovering addict, or he's an addict. He'll be an addict for the rest of his life and he has to deal with it in the way that he does. He goes through the 12 step program in his book where he details at one point he was into drugs. At another point he was into sex where he acted callously, impulsively, degenerately, uh, explo exploitively in the sense, you know, treated women like, like, like objects to the point where they were hurt. They felt terrible, et cetera, et cetera. You leave that type of, uh, wake in your history, it's very easy to exploit it, to go and pick people's memories and maybe twist memories and whatever. So that's the backdrop. This story comes out in the Times. Four women have now made accusations of rape, uh, exploitation, psychological abuse, all of it, but the most serious of which is actual rape, uh, for which there's no statute of limitations in England to the extent that whatever occurred in England, statute of limitations, I think it's 10 or 20 years in America, depending on where. And um, there's text messages, which may or may not confirm the, you know, support the rape accusations. Russell Brand is the latest in a long line of prominent populist, if not, you know, right wing, for lack of a better word, speakers. You had Tucker Carlson. They came after him for being racist. Elon Musk, anti-Semitic, sexual harassment. Trump, Kavanaugh. I, I mean, I made a list on Twitter. They've come for him now. And now the question is, how much deep doo-doo is he in? Robert, what's your take on the expose? Uh, the ev the evidence that has been adduced thus far in that article and the overall mo here. Uh, yeah, I mean it relates to another Me Too case this week. Uh, coach um, Mel Tucker at Michigan State University, the football coach, was indefinitely suspended on allegations of sexual harassment. Harassment, and uh, that allegation I find utterly ludicrous. Uh, the bottom line is Michigan State is conspiring. Uh, to to deprive Mel Tucker of the $70 million plus he is due if they fire him early as a football coach because they gave him a $95 million contract to lock him in when he was looking great. He hasn't looked great since then. Now they want out of the deal. And so what do they do? They do, uh, you know, was it Disclosure? Is that the Michael Crichton book turned into a movie with Demi Moore? Uh, you know, they meet to him. And, and, and you hear the Me Too allegations. It's not brought by an actual employee. It's not concerning any relation, any actual employment. It's not concerning any actual in-person conduct. It's a phone sex call where she was so bothered and so offended that she sat there and just listened for 26 minutes. <laughs> right? Come on. This is, by the way, this is someone who claims, uh, to my knowledge, never been able to prove that they were the victim of sexual assault. And I've often explained to people, and I, was, I represent many victims of abuse. Why would anyone lie about it? the same reason people do it sexual abuse is mostly about power and the people who lie lie because the lie is power and uh, i think mel tucker is clearly the victim of a conspiracy wouldn't be the first conspiracy at michigan state involving sexual abuse issues it's just this time falsely accusing mel tucker of it and this the allegation my problem with the allegations against russell brand is they sound just like julian assange that it's not i consider it demeaning uh, and dehumanizing uh, to the word rape or assault to use whether you use proper birth control rape. Those two things are not the same. They shouldn't be used in the same sentence, same paragraph, same anything. Here's the second issue. When it comes to whether or not 
uh, the, you know, the Me Too era has basically escalated everything into rape. Everything's rape. You regret it the next day, rape. You regret it a week later, rape. You regret it a year later, rape. This demeans the meaning of rape, which is one of the most horrific crimes that anyone that's ever represented a victim or been a victim or knows a victim knows it is. And to so demean it by uh, analogizing it to, well, you didn't use the birth control I wanted you to. You didn't use the, uh, uh, the I'm worried about whether you gave me STDs because of the method in which we engaged in sexual relations. The other big problem with that is I'm not sure if that'd be such a great feminist argument. In the history of relationships, who do you think more likely lies about who's on birth control and who ain't? Hint, it ain't the men. It's usually the women. Uh, a lot of baby daddies, uh, NBA baby daddies, NFL baby daddies, a lot of uh, f- rich, famous people baby daddies running around because she said she was on the pill. Is that now right? Are we going to lock them all up? Heck, my mom tri- tricked my dad so she could have my little sister. <laughs> oh, let's go, go back and lock them all up. And then the, the other same uh, category, at, same is true, honestly, of STDs uh, in terms of where that tend, you know, the, there's as many women that give men STDs as the other way around. So, uh, you know, to, to reduce uh, rape allegations to every form of, you know, fill out a 62 page consent form and comply precisely uh, is not it is demeans the nature of rape allegations. These are people who got into relationships with Russell Brand, some of whom regretted it at, at the time, some of whom regretted it later. So what? None of it, as far as I can tell, is a crime. It is as one of the texts themselves. That some people are saying, oh, this text is damning. Yep. She says in the text, bad decision that she made. Yeah. I'll bring when up. you dig into the whole text, she's saying, oh, I guess, you know, this decision, and it's the, a bad one. And she talks about her making it, this, not him this, making it, her this, making it. This was one of the allegations of in the article. They say rape. I, I'd say, I get so neurotic that I don't want to make my own. I make, Nadia alleges that she told, this is Nadia, allege, it's a fake name. Uh, he carried on. I'm stuck underneath the painting. He's pushing up against me. He's a lot taller than me, and he has that glazed look in his eyes, and I can't move. Get off, she claims. Um, he pushed her away. This is one of the ones where she claims rape, and the supporting message is that, the supporting evidence is that, yeah. set, set the aside whether... The message her claim of, a, of sexual assault. Pe- people are dissecting it because it goes from fuzzy to, to clear, and there's no timestamp on the reply where there is on the... Set that all aside. Let's assume it's even accurate. It says here, you scared the shit out of me. You're right, I am a lovely person. And it goes on. You have a problem, you need help. It's dangerous that you think you can get your way all of the time. Being very persuasive. Yeah, I, I didn't want to wear a condom this time. I, I don't know, I'm just I play it out of my head. But she says, you don't have the best reputation. I pride, I think pride. I pride myself on being safe and trying to make the right decisions. Obviously, this was a bad one, a bad decision. I'm right. so That's disappointed. Her recognizing she made a decision, she made a bad one. Now regrets it, regretted it apparently at the time. Now, so I don't think any of this establishes grounds for civil assault or criminal assault based on the what I've seen to date. The other component is clearly some of these people went forward at the time. The authorities thought the exact same thing. So why now? Why now? Why now is the same reason why now is to Mel Tucker. Well, hold, and, hold on, Robert. Let me let me say why now. Let's just I want everyone to understand the why now. They they all all said they felt ready to speak only after being approached by reporters. My goodness. Well, they felt they've they've now had the time to be approached by reporters. Which reporters? Uh, a Murdoch owned uh, Times in the UK, uh, Channel Four, which I don't know what it is. Apparently, I think it's BBC good... owned. And um, the entire they a... institutional British media that now uh, that Russell Brand has gone with Rumble, that Russell Brand has become sort of the populist left, that Russell Brand is supporting Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, now is subject to a smear campaign. I mean, the timing of this further discredits the accusations, in my view. But putting that aside, you can just read the accusations and see this is not a strong civil or criminal case here. Uh, it's not what they're trying to make it out to be. There's really no credible allegation of a sexual assault at all. It's only was the birth control done right? Was it? Uh, did the person feel pressured? I mean, my goodness. Uh, I mean, and, the, and, uh, the problems with calling that a crime or a tort just go on and on and on. Everybody would end up bad dragged into court 
Uh, you know, the, how, how many men say, well, I really felt pressured. She really, you know, no, da, 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 da. I, I can even very much understand how some of the women felt absolutely exploited when he is going through an out of control sexual addiction where it's like, oh, and, and it's, I can understand that. And I can understand feeling very angry that the, the experience wasn't what the woman wanted, but it was, you know, pretty much what, what, what Russell was, was after in the, in the throes of an addiction, which materializes in sex. But Robert, one of the accusations, which everyone is going on about is that one of the girls was 16 and Russell was 30 ish. I think yeah, either 30 or 31. Um, and in the article, it says, I don't feel that a 16 year old should be able to consent, except that's the freaking law in, in England. The age of consent is 16. It's quite young. I mean, it's, it strikes me as being young, but 18, okay, an 18 year old is going out with a 30 year old. The article itself, according to the women who only felt comfortable to come forward after being approached by journalists, are complaining about the state of the law to try to impugn Russell Brand for having done what some people might think is a little uh, a little edgy, but law, I'm saying edgy, like, some people might have a very big problem, especially if you're the 16 year old's dad, but legal under UK law or English law. So I'll say that it's, um, he was an easy target because of what he's openly admitted to, which, yeah. um, I mean, it, it's an obvious hit piece. Uh, the, the timing of it is obvious. It's a, it's a smear piece top to bottom. He, it's something, it'd be one thing if he had pretended that this wasn't his life in the past. He's been, as you note, very open that this has been and how self-destructive it was. And even including in the text, he's not a jerk to any of these people. He's often apologizing. He's trying to deal with a composer. It's like, this doesn't, I didn't read this and come across as this is some predatorial guy. I got this as a desperate guy with, a, and this is a reflection of modern culture. The, 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 the current culture is that half of women chase 10% of men. And then they're basically in a de facto harem. When they figure that out, they get real bitter about it. Ah, well, don't, don't chase 10% of men. I'm sorry. I mean, I've, I've, no, I've very little sympathy for the bad choices made of an entire culture and generation of people. Uh, obviously, he made bad choices, but he has admitted that. He's never said otherwise. Uh, what What's too often excused is the bad behavior of the women involved. Why are you busy sleeping with people you just met? Why are you busy sleeping with random men? Uh, you know, look in the mirror before you point the finger. Uh, that's the other cultural phenomenon I think is at issue here. Yeah, and also I, I keep checking because I don't want to make a mistake. Nadia, the one who alleged that in that text message, the rape, uh, had admitted to having consensual sex with him before. Um, as, and, you know, it... it, it can you read like, that text? She's nervous that he didn't use a condom. Yeah, she, and as, as, really, you know, as, as she should be. And it said, you don't have the best reputation in the text. I mean, for goodness sake. Well, they don't date the guy in the first place. Don't see the guy in the first place. Quit denying yourself autonomy. That's the other problem I have with all this. It, is it, it denies people their own power. And, it's, and it, it, it treats as indistinguishable someone who's truly the victim of sexual assault and rape and someone who has regrets, someone who makes bad choices like she did. And, and, and there, there's this whole attempt because the whole point is feminism, third wave feminism, preach this mantra that, hey, you can be just like men, which biologically is just not true. Uh, and, and I mean biologically not true in terms of sexual relations, uh, women attach, men don't, uh, is just part of the chemical, biochemical different reaction, aside from the re risk of pregnancy and the like being distinct, obviously, for women, not for men, for everybody outside the New York Times. The, uh, but the, the other dynamic is that's taking place through this whole transformation of culture is a lack of accountability, lack of responsibility, which is also lack of empowerment. You treat people like victims. You strip them of their autonomy. You strip them of their power. You disempower them over time. Uh, the, it's what you know, sort of welfare programs are designed to do. They're not designed to help people. They're designed to make them dependent and incapable of being able to help themselves. And if they try, they get punished for it economically. They get punished for it in terms of relationships. Bring the father back to the home. Okay, now you're out of housing. Now you're out of food benefits. Now you're out of basic health care. Now you're out of, I mean, it's insanity. But, with the, but because third wave feminism said, hey, you can be just like men, sleep with them whenever you want. Only, you know, the, it created a distorted culture where 10 percent of women chase 80. I mean, sorry, 80 percent of women chase 10 percent of men and leaves all these people unhappy and creating this distortions in all large parts of our society. The whole rise of incels, the equivalent of that in Japan, 
these people who'd never leave their room. There's variations of this all. And it's never ended well, by the way. The reason why polygamous societies failed is because it excluded too many men and the men got pissed off, caused a lot of problems. And they decided, well, let's go with monogamy instead, rather than have, at least that way we'll have, you know, we'll be able to keep our heads, uh, the royal families and elites. But the it's they taught them that they could and be now that it's not true. And, and of course, women are discovering it's not true and they're bitter and they're unhappy. So what are the media who is still defending this? Oh, it's because you're a victim again of men. You're, you're, you're just being victimized. It's not you've been a victim of their uh, bad ideology, their bad ideas of third wave feminism. That couldn't possibly be the source of it. Well, and I'd say I don't know everything about female physiology, but I, I would dare say the percentage of men who can climax and have full satisfaction in 30 seconds is greatly um, disproportionately more than the amount of women that can do that. And so for someone who's into whatever Russell was in, you know, a 30 second, it's good for me, might leave the woman feeling somewhat exploited. And you can very easily exploit those uh, b bad feelings 15 plus years later. The other thing is the, 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 the lapse of time like I explained in the Substack type thing on, on locals. The lapse of time is, is fundament, fundamentally unfair. I understand all the arguments for it, but waiting 16, 17 years when you can never disprove the allegations, well, you've, you've done the damage by the allegations alone. <laughs>